George? Is it you? Officer Davidson, if you would kindly pay me the respect my rank commands now. Fighting for the British? And working for my enemy who would enslave you? I'll say something's rank. Ha! The Loyalists have guaranteed my freedom. I will fight for it and win it for myself. Meanwhile, the slaves and the poor are targets in New Orleans, and you play the hero in New York. Who do you serve? And do you really think yourself free? Charity should begin at himself, Miss Avelina. I had hoped it would not come to this. Now, in death, eternal freedom. You mock me. I chose my destiny. That is real freedom. Perhaps one day you will know it too. I... Who is the company man? <laughs> the answer has been in your own backyard all along. Just... Open your eyes. <sighs> Did you find what you sought? We, oui. and much that I didn't. Connor, are you always certain in the means and ways of the Brotherhood? I... trust my own hands. Of course. Travel safely. It's the arrival that concerns me. <laughs> then you are on the right path. Okay, now AC Liberations is just being silly. Like, six-year-old lampshade on head silly. If you don't remember, because I haven't told you, about two chapters ago, Aveline was tasked by her stepmother to take a rescued slave from New Orleans to the bayou for a trip up north to safety. She did that in a couple missions thanks to her smuggler contacts, and later she was pointed by her other assassins that the northern assassins needed some support for the coming revolution. And once you heard that opening line from this quest, you knew that the cheap Connor cameo from Assassin's Creed 3 was coming in. For all the pseudo build-up to this, it doesn't really lead to much. Connor is simply in the middle of jobs and doesn't have much motivation in life other than his current work, which is tracking down some murderers at a local military fort. 
and thanks to a conveniently frozen waterfall, Eveline and Connor infiltrate the fort in record time. Thank Christ for stealth game enemy vision! Sheesh, these guys were so easy to take out, I'm surprised that they weren't completely outdone by the local wolf packs. In order to secure the fort, Aveline heads over the command tower to take on the platoon's leader that turns out to be George the Slave from earlier in the game! What the absolute fuck is that? Do I seriously have to list out why this is the stupidest thing I've seen in a franchise full of plot holes and terrible characters? First off, George is a slave. And yet, they made him a military commander in a ridiculous coat. Could the Templars have seriously recruited literally anyone else that would make more sense? What possible combat experience could George the Slave have to be able to convince the Templar leader that he was the best guy to station at this winter military fort? It must have been the best of bad options because George can't fight for shit. I think I shut him up and his guards inside of 90 seconds, which is pretty bad when you're talking major character fights. However, in spite of that great swordsmanship, Aveline slipped up so flippin' hard that George was able to blockade the tower door and get to his getaway carriage. Honestly, the climb up this dumb tower with a time limit is way more difficult than actually fighting George, because the handholds are hard to see, the climbing is unintuitive, and I have no idea about where the game wants me to make Aveline go to hit the flippin' objective marker. Also, if you make any mistakes in the climb, like literally any of them, then you are guaranteed to fail, and that's always a fun time. At the very least, Aveline manages to use her new vantage point to tackle George on his getaway carriage and then murder him because George Davidson was such a useful asset for the Templars. Oh, they are going to be so mad when they learn that you killed George the Slave! George was like a father to those Templars, and you killed him, you monster. 